SETI Ranch, actually, and something that I actually um, wanted to know what I was dealing with before I went out there. So I did a hypnotic regression from the first time I was out there, specifically for what did my subconscious to, to record out there. So I think it's worth talking about. I want to talk about it on Patreon, where they're not uh, all these trolls and stuff. There's a couple people that I think have maybe been there that might be with me and want to talk about that and be interested. So. Let's go from there and uh, just try to put this out there because it's interesting and I think it's worthy to tell people about it. Why not? Yo. Salutations. <laughs> I wanted to talk about um, the Assetti Ranch and uh, actually both of my trips out there, all right? So um, this is uh, actually really positive, but it's very informative nonetheless. Now, the first time I went out to the ranch, um, I did a several videos over that if you look on the YouTube on my YouTube channel and you'll see how many unique experiences I had out there and to be honest with you I thought that that point in my life was kind of over <laughs> I was just gonna kind of go on normal and apparently not I went out there and got blasted perceptually so what I wanted to know is before I went out the second time in 2017 to uh, speech the, speak, uh, speak at the conference again I wanted to know exactly what did my subconscious record during these conscious experiences. I've been around too long now, now and been through too much not to know that our superconscious and subconscious is where most of these experiences happen on. And a lot of these beings we're dealing with are so vibrationally fast that that's where they're at right now. That It's hard for us to even retain the memory of it, let alone um, uh, consciously deal with it. So. That's, that's something I want to do. So I want to know what I was dealing with when I went out there. So I actually got a couple of regressions, but one specifically over the first time I was out there and those experiences. All right. So I want to go over with you some things that came out of it and ultimately what I draw my conclusions of and why when I went out there last time, I had a really good time, but I was very much looking things in a different perspective that no one was aware of, you know, but that's a good thing. So, um, the first experience is I've been out there maybe two days, all right, and this is before the conference, so the conference, all the people hadn't arrived yet, and I was with my friend uh, talking to her in her tent at about 3 o'clock a.m., and I keep seeing lights in, like, the trees back behind her when we're talking, and she decides she's going to go, like, take a shower and stuff, and that's, like, way across from where her tent was, so she went over there, and when she went over there, I decided to go out in the field of dreams to go ahead and see... Um, you know, if I could maybe get a better look at whatever these lights were. And that's when I saw several craft. One comes up from the trees, it seems like. One comes off the mountain. And one comes from kind of the other, other way back over there. And they're coming in, and these things are getting close, all right? These definitely aren't iridium flares. They're starting getting fairly close to me, to where I can see that really the different kind of configurations on them and some of them are these light type of ships. And I observed these things for a while. They put on... Uh, what my Native American friends would say they were dancing in the sky. And I go back, finally go back to my friend, she never came back. I go back and uh, she just had left me out there. 
for like it had been, you know, 45 minutes or something. So I wouldn't exactly call it missing time, but it was very, very odd. And the ships just came too close. So I wanted to know what I subconsciously saw. When I got uh, taken down to Theta, what my subconscious had recorded there is I am looking at uh, actually seeing one thing. One of the ship coming off the mountain appears to be uh, actually coming off one side, the other side of the dimensional door. This side, it appears to look like, honestly, like kind of a turban, all right? And it's coming like, like, a, like a Hindu turban. It, it's coming off this mountain. And when it's detaching, what's coming through in this regression, I'm saying when it's detaching, actually it's cloaked dimensionally most of the time when it's there. When it takes off, it looks like um, a, a ship shooting out of the mountain. But actually it's something, a flare that happens when it uh, come, just detaches. So that's one of the things that comes through there. Okay, so I start trying to see what's actually in this ship. And what I observe is, <laughs> it's so interesting because I've never seen one of these beings. It's a cat being. And it looks like a bobcat. You're familiar with the bobcat that kind of has the longer whiskers? It looks like that, but it's about eight feet tall. It's got on, it almost looks like a swami type of a, uh, a guru jacket with a collar on, a golden collar on it. A very distinctive jacket, I'm not kidding you. And it's, this thing is huge though. And I'm just uh, watching it, what appears to be in this ship that's dome shaped. But you know that what these, the support beams of it and things of the ship looked a lot like pyrite. Real pyrite that still got black, uh, what do you call it in them? You know, real, what real pyrite looks like before it gets all shined up. It looks similar to that, all right? And palisites also, meteorite palisites look similar to that in the walls, all right? So that's just one thing that happened when I actually am looking, trying to see that, all right? So something else I wanted to know, separate from that, is I was having very odd dreams out there, all right? These dreams that were um, like I was inside that mountain or something, or someone's communicating with me. But you know, I, I'm not one, unless I'm really doing the right spiritual practices to have these great lucid dreams. I kind of go out unless I'm practicing, they're not always lucid. These are somewhat lucid dreams. I just remember like interacting with people what I thought was in that mountain. So I want to investigate that also, okay? Now when I did that, what I'm seeing is one thing is at the center of this mountain has got A-G-L-E in it, which is a lot like that engine I've shown you before that has the column in it, all right? It's got, they, they're showing me H-E-L-E is in the center of this and it's powering this and it's actually powering the city. There's like a crystalline city inside the sleeping lady. This is the holographic mountain right here, all right? Then um, I've shown that to you before actually in the holographic mountain video. But anyway, so that's one thing that I'm seeing here, but I'm seeing beings in here tending to uh, like a type of technology. And they look like what my friend Peter Maxwell Slattery calls the old man. And I heard many people mention these beings that are hooded beings that look kind of similar to E.T. if they don't have their hoods on. Okay, so there's a couple of pictures I put with these, these beings at the beginning and end. You'll see them on there. But anyway, that's one thing there. And they seem to be just more busy at doing work. And I'm being communicated during this uh, uh, regression that they are called the mole people. Never heard that. That came through several times, they are called the mole people. So, okay, that is what it is. Um, going further from that, <laughs> um, going to the next experience I had out there, which is gonna be the holographic mountain incident. That's the third thing that happened to me out there, all right? And this was, uh, if you've seen that video, it was hard to take. All right, when we were actually filming that video, I couldn't hardly stay calm enough to talk and do it. But what I saw is that ship started going down. The Pleiadian Circle is right over here. I think you can see it. Um, anyway, the, the, um, this is viewing from the Pleiadian Circle, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, the ship goes down here, and I think this is called uh, Flathead Mountain or something like that. It goes down about to this far, and it, 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 I mean, it disappears then it reappears about right here. And we can see through the mountain about right here. You can just see through it and see this thing. I keep thinking, well, my visual acuity is off. It must have descended in front of the mountain, not behind it. 
but it was it was then when I thought that it went out and it came back on and I could see it through the mountain it went back up came back down and did it twice okay so that threw my whole thing with the holographic principle really really into it really, it, I mean, it, it, it tripped me out real good, man. Really dope. As my brother would say, I was freaking out, man. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> um, this ship was also morphing, okay? It turned into like, it was from one spear, it turned into five, then back into one, like elongated, crossed, and would turn into one, so it was morphing. And my friend Albert had saw this also, so it's not just me, and that type of delusion is not shared. Um, okay, so I wanted to know, well, who was on that ship? What was on there? What was I getting super conscious wise? What was I getting on the Theta? Maybe even Delta, all right? And what I see during this regression, clearly it's odd because during the time consciously as I'm watching this, I tried to kind of tune in telepathically to what was on this ship. And what I'm picking up telethought wise are these white cactuses and Later the next day when I described this to Albert, he says, do you think maybe you're seeing like a botanical room or something like that? Um, some sort of horticultural type of this uh, on this ship? I said, no, I believe these were beings. And we don't know that much about really peyote and things like that, where all these cactuses come from. These were some type of white cactuses that were in a formation, a pattern like a, a triangle, okay? The way they seem to be stationed. They came through very clear, all right? And I understand during the aggression that come through, those are some type of guardians that have been with Earth a long time. Interesting how we haven't heard of that. How much of none of this is like we've been told in contact, all right? So that's one thing that comes through there, but something else, I saw the pilot of this ship. And that's something I found super interesting, okay? I'm gonna show you an illustration from Christine Dennett that was not done for me, all right? It was done actually for another experiencer, but this being I saw, on board this craft uh, looked quite similar to this, all right? Um, this being right here. And you know, I see some differences though. What would be different is this being looked like a cross between an iguanodon and a rhinoceros. A rhinoceros without the, uh, the horns, okay? I've never seen anything quite like it. It was quite striking. There was no insignia here, okay? But however, it did have an insignia on the, in, the uniform I saw. And I, I, I put an emphasis on that because of all these experiences I've had, I don't see insignias on uniforms. Just have not seen that, all right? And here's what really blows me away. I had seen this insignia before on a car, and I can't place what it was. I thought maybe it was Toyota, maybe it was Lexus. Man, I was all over the internet, and nothing matched it, all right? And then um, one day, I was going through some pictures that I had taken with my friend Larkin O'Toole, who was also on this panel uh, this year. And it was a picture we took by his car, and I see this symbol. I asked that some message, what, 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 what type of car is that again? He said, man, it's, it's a Prius. Yeah, actually, I'm sorry, I was out there, it was this year. Uh, he told me, I saw it while I was sitting in there, I saw the symbol. I said, what is this, it's a Prius. I said, okay, so that's this symbol right here. This being had on a symbol quite similar to this. I see the only thing different, maybe there was like a little piece of like something going like right there, but I mean, it was so near that it's unreal. So it makes me wonder, why in the hell would any being, excuse me, how in the heck would any being have on a Prius type of emblem? What is, this, what is the history of this emblem? Straight up. <laughs> anyway, so what's coming out in the regression is that this, being is actually a Saurian. And that's odd because I'm getting constantly during this regression that nothing is like we're being told in the contact experience. I already knew that, but I'm getting that that is a type of a Saurian. They're going a lot into inner earth. They're talking about inner earth a lot and how inside of this mountain, Sleeping Lady, there is a crystalline city, a type of a crystalline city that to me looks a lot like the Pumpkin Palace, that cave that I'll put a picture on the in the beginning of this, as you see the Pumpkin Palace, what they're showing me looks a lot like this. And they're saying that most humans can't be in there because negative emotions and vibrations disrupt this place. Maybe shatter it or something, I don't know. But I mean, that's, that, that's intense. So 
that's what that's that's what distinctively came through there on that, and they're giving me a lot of information concerning the inner earth uh, and how when I hear this alliance, the part of the alliance I deal with is not just extra, extra galactic, which I've talked about a lot, but interdimensional as well. The interdimensional means right here on earth a lot of times. These beings within the earth matrix, that there are like nine dimensions or more, like the layers of an onion. Same thing with the dimensions here on earth. I've always heard that. That's coming through the same thing. So you start getting into an inner city like that here on earth, you're getting dimensional to a certain degree. I mean, this is very real. What I saw was real, and it wasn't the government out there putting on a holographic mountain. The, sorry, as all conspiracy zones separated, they don't have that type of technology what I saw. They're not that good, and I'll put money on that. Now, I think they do a lot of other stuff that's hidden, but not this. I mean, this was surreal. All right, now, going back, um, that's the, the other thing was I had a Sasquatch encounters, but I won't go as much into that. Maybe another video. Um, I got a lot about realizing how I have ancestors that had um, a pact with Sasquatch in terms of they had like some trading agreements and things like that. And uh, also that Sasquatch still represents the type one civilization that was here on earth. And that whole place there, that whole, that whole mountain there, this whole mountain of the city, I did a video about this. I believe it's a device, all right? A device that actually, on top of other things, not just a hangar for some craft, and this, this, this power column here as a power center, I believe there's also some type of a device in there that produces holographic uh, imagery through orb technology, all right? And I say that the first day I was out there this year, I only had two things happen that really blew me away, three things, but not quite like the first year. But right here, I would see these, uh, right by the pyramid right there, by the dimensional door at night. Several people on witnesses would look like almost disco lights in there, strobe lights. And I kept looking at it, I was like, man, that looks like a processor from the old uh, TV shows, like in the 70s when they show you a computer, he's going do, 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 that old stuff. It looked like that though. And it wasn't lasers anymore. I had other people help me son, tell me nobody's shaming lasers or anything. And we all watched this oh, again and again. I believe that it's producing orb technology that will do something that will push your, tech, your consciousness forward. So give you an example for me. Now that I know that out there, there is some type of an intelligence behind that mountain out there, okay? How does that mountain interact with us in the divine field during our experiences? And I say this because I'm very leery of some things, although I believe what I saw, but I, I'll tell you, it, this was in regression, but still, my subconscious did see this, but by the same, my superconscious, but the same token, I have been told several times that there are cat beings out there from Lyra, cat beings from Sirius, and things like that. That's one of the things out there. So my subconscious, my, my consciousness has already been kind of tainted with that and saturated with that. So in turn, I'm having a real experience, but this intelligence out there is that how it's interacting with me? Since I'm not seeing a, a cat being, well, here you go. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? I don't know, but I can tell you that we have to deal with the fact that not all of these are beings. These are beings interacting through the quantum hologram. That whole hologram thing you see going on out there, that's what is being produced by that land. And you know, the Sasquatch keeps coming up again and again, inner earth, inner earth. People are hearing infrasound out there a lot. So I think that needs to be just really looked at. And how many other are these devices are still in existence from a type one past earth civilization to help awaken humanity. Because if you're on that property out there and once you get kind of cleansed the healing of the, um, of the, of the land itself will kind of heal you. Once you get past that, then you're gonna, you know, you're gonna have like a, an orb technology, something that stretches your consciousness. I did that interview with Jimmy Church on Coast to Coast. He started laughing because I, I said, now you were out there. He goes, I ain't no free talking about that. I said, you were out there. Didn't something happen that changed your consciousness for the better, made you want to expand forward? He's like, yes. Everybody, a lot of people say that if you're awakened, you go out there. That's kind of, it's a, it's a thing of the land, all right? So that's just um, the way I want to, at least I want to put that, at least as far as the land itself. But I think that once those orbs get around us, because before we saw this holographic mountain, I was walking towards the planning circle with Albert, and he was, I was a little bit walking a little bit ahead of him, and he was saying things, I turned around and looked at him, 
I kept seeing these purple orbs like behind him, like back there. They're big. I could turn back again. They weren't always there, but I detected them several times. So I'm wondering, did that get in my field of awareness and cause me to see this holographic mountain like that? Did that's why I saw that? Is that how all of a sudden I'm seeing a cat being? Is that prime intelligence, is that how it's interacting with me through the quantum hologram and the divine field that alters my perception so that's how I'm experiencing it? That may be all of our experiences. A lot of what we see are holograms to a certain degree and it's very real, you know? So that's uh, what I wanna do there. I'm gonna look through these notes real quick. First of all, when I do regression like this, it ran probably an hour and a half. So there's a ton of information that comes out it's being recorded, so I mean, I can go back and listen to it, but I have to jot that stuff down. It's a lot. And some of it will blow you away in terms of what information actually comes out. So, um, let's see. Um, the ships and the, that they're mining out there, they're mining a lot of ores and things like that that, keep, that kept coming through. How much they're mining from that area out there, and they always have. But they were talking of ships that were different than the organic ships I only speak of and have been on board. They were talking about non-reproductive silicon consciousness. That's what come through and that's what they're saying, okay? <laughs> non-reproductive silicon consciousness. And um, I mentioned before that the mountain on the side, the, the, the ship or whatever, that large ship that was on the side of that mountain, that I think might sit there a lot cloth, cloaked, cloaked, um, phased, whatever, it looks a lot like, honestly, some type of a turban, or like maybe the Maharaja, the Taj Mahal, something like that. I'll put up a pictures of that, but I mean, that really tripped me out, so it makes me think of, Lord, where did they get the, the idea for those hats? Where is really the origin of that? It's worth investigating. It takes a lot of research, though. Um, all right, um, another one, uh, I think that's I think that's most of it. Everybody actually, um, they kept emphasizing that there's such a thing really as a red matter that interacts with holograms to make it more virtual reality solid. I don't really know what that means. It, it, it said the red matter, not red matter, the red spectrum aids in particle synthesis during holographic deals. That's beyond me, but I know there's some scientists that probably know exactly what that is. So, anyway, um, <clears throat> that's uh, that's mostly what I want to tell you. Thank you for coming to Patreon and checking this out. Um, please put some comments on here. I'll respond to them. I will be happy to talk to people. I even do another video that's a live feed if you all want it. Okay, and I appreciate everybody because it wasn't for all the support. I got on YouTube, I wouldn't be right here right now. So it wasn't just all the trolls there. Yeah, they're bad, they're bad. They get on your nerves, they, well, they'll, they'll wear you out a little bit. But it's all the good people here that's real. The reason why I spoke out is coming through. So thank you, God bless, and um, I'll see you soon. Yo.